Hey guys, figured I'd do a quick video here just to share some cool things. Um, just want to show you some, maybe like two examples of some cool chord voice leading type stuff you can do for minor two five ones. So we'll do it in like a C minor, and we'll do uh, for the two five. We'll just do like a half measure each, like one two three four, one two three four, and we're really focusing just on the two and the five, the one. It's just going to be where you can resolve it to. And for both these examples, I'm going to do something where we have a different chord, or voicing at least, for each um, quarter note. So it should be four voicings per measure. Okay? And just a couple of points so you can see where I'm coming from. First of all, um, one thing that I like to use a lot for like half diminished chords, um, two nice little substitutions that you can use and combine they're both different types of major seven ones um one of them if you watch my video on there's like a video i have on like expanding your chord vocabulary and one of them is referenced in that where whatever the root of the half diminished chord is um you go down a tritone or up a tritone so in this case if it's d then it would be a a flat and you play like a, well in that video I had a major 7-9 and if you play a major 7-9 a tritone away from the root of the half diminished chord um, that's a nice substitution for that um, but you can also extrapolate from that and it doesn't if, if that works it doesn't necessarily always have to be a major 7-9 so you can also just use like a major 7 which I'll use in this example um, and then the other one is if that's A flat, if you go up a fourth from that, which is also just a half step below the root, so if the chord is D half diminished, then um, D flat major seven. And this one, it, it should be pretty clear. Like if you have a D half diminished chord, like this voicing, all you're doing is you're taking the root and moving it down. And one thing I've been noticing when I'm studying um, voice leading and the way chords move smoothly, a lot of times it's, interesting bass motion that kind of makes things sound good and you know um like it's a good way to kind of justify some nice sounds like even if other things are still saying diatonic staying diatonic um the bass as long as it's moving in a smooth way can sometimes do whatever it wants and produces some nice sounds so that's the most how i think that kind of relates there um so I'm going to be using these major seven chords in both examples, okay? And the other thing, too, is this. You know, there's a lot of voice leading rules that you can study and learn and really understand, and I am not even that well studied when it comes to all this stuff, but, you know, I, I know, like, some basic things, and you see them here and there, but to kind of give you just a very, like, rough summary, I tend to find that, like, if you're trying to find chord voicings that... Um, go into one another that have a nice voice leading to them Obviously you got to hear how they sound and see if they sound good But a lot of times it's like you're just picking voicings that are close To the voicings that you already played so there's not necessarily like a lot of motion going on and it's very smooth And there's obviously lots of chords and substitutions you can pick but that's just a good thing to keep in mind if you Play voicings that are just next to each other when they're changing from chord to chord or whatever That's kind of a good way to um, create nice voice leading. It's a very um, half-assed point that I'm making there, but I think it can actually kind of help. So anyway, the first one, so basically, here's what I'm gonna do. So we have, again, D, uh, D half diminished to G7. So in the first example, this is what it sounds like. Okay, and what those chords are, this, this is, your classic drop two voicings is just third inversion of the D half diminished. So here it's just the actual chord, but in the third inversion. Okay, then we're going to this, so that's a D flat major seven chord. I'm just making it D flat major nine. And then this is your straight up A flat major seven chord. Nothing fancy really about it. And then we go finally to the five. And I use this G7, you know, sharp nine, sharp five chord. And then I can resolve to this, which is like if you think C minor 9 and not the 11 on top. Okay, and again, you're trying to find sounds that have nice voice link um, in them. And a lot of times it's the melody note that's doing a lot of that. So that one again. Okay, and 
then the other example, now this one I kind of got from, if you know the tune, How Deep Is the Ocean, like the last couple chords of the uh, um, first half, it's basically B7, B flat 7, D half diminished, G7. So it's preceded by these chromatic dominant 7 chords. And just like I always say with the way things voice lead into one another, sometimes you can insert things. If things are moving in a sequential way and are approaching the same thing that you're approaching, eventually you can use them. So um, so this other example, basically what these chords are is... Okay? And they really are just kind of following those chords. Um, this is like a B7 with the sus9, or it's not sus, it's B7-9, because it's not the third there. And then this is like a B flat 7 suspended with the 9 and the 11. And then this is like a A major, um, like 6-9, or, I'm sorry, uh, A major 7-9 chord. Um, and then this is like your classic G7 sharp 5 altered chord, and then resolve into C minor. And this one is cool because in this one you're t um, keeping this common melody note for the, all those chords before you get to the C minor. All right, and again, like the, that point before, I mean, obviously this is what's making it sound nice, but if you look at all these other chords, the way they're moving, these shapes are very closely related and everything is moving in a smooth manner, okay? So, you know, these are just two examples of minor two fives, but obviously, you know, this is stuff to study in all chord progressions, but I just kind of wanted to use these examples to kind of just show you how, you know, you tend to pick voicings that are close to one another and create this smooth motion. And obviously always use your ear to make sure it sounds good and to your taste. So um, I hope you enjoy that.